All right, what's up, y'all? We're looking at the top abandoned mansions that can't sell for any money, like not even a dime or a nickel. We're just gonna get into it right now. <laughs> It sounds unbelievable, but even celebrities have faced the wrath of the housing crisis. From houses in despair, to listings that have long been forgotten, and cults taking over properties, here are celebrity mansions that cannot sell for any price. Number 20. Nellie's Mansion in St. Louis, suburb of Wildwood, Missouri. That looked kinda nice. From being blasted over the radio to being played as elevator music, you could not escape Nelly's music in the early 2000s, even if you tried. They gonna play with the elevator music, they don't. They, they gotta get around right The singer accumulated a massive fortune after releasing several top charting hits, winning three Grammys, and starring in several productions. His albums, Nellyville and Country Grammar, earned him several million in record sales. And Nelly decided to use some of that fortune to buy a mansion in Missouri. So, in 2002, Nelly bought a $2 million Grand Tuscan style mansion in Wild. That shit got a nice though. I ain't gonna lie. Wood. The 12,000 square foot estate is situated on a 12 acre property, hosts five bedrooms and seven bathrooms. The property is designed with an open concept floor plan, featuring high ceilings and expansive windows that flood the interior with natural light and offer breathtaking views of the surrounding countryside. See that backyard must have been popping back when he had it. From just the way like everything just overlooks like that hill right there, that's lit. The mansion also features a state-of-the-art chef's kitchen, a formal dining room, and multiple living areas for entertainment. The master suite is complete with a spa-like bathroom and a spacious walk-in closet. Damn. The home offers an indoor basketball court, a game room, and a home theater as well. That theater nice. Outdoors, the estate features a stunning infinity pool, a hot tub, and multiple patios and terraces. While the house was big enough for any family, Nelly never intended on living there. He had planned to flip it over for a profit. However, while the home stayed vacant, no real construction ever took place on the property. Then, in 2021, the rapper listed the home for sale for half of what he paid for, $1 million. Buyers quit. $1 million for that, though? She, I mean, it is nice, but damn. Quickly lined up, and Nelly finalized a deal for a little under a million with one of them. He ended up getting $982,500 for a mansion he'd paid $2 million for. Still, it felt like it was not about the money anymore. All Nelly wanted was to get rid of the mansion. The story does not end there. The buyer turned out to be none other than the infamous David E. Taylor who owns and operates the Kingdom of God Global Church, long been accused of being a cult. Taylor has aroused suspicion in recent years for acquiring properties all over Missouri. Right before he bought Nellie's mansion, he had bought a five-bedroom mansion in Chesterfield. It is unclear what Taylor intends on using Nellie's former mansion for. However, according to the infamous man himself, he plans on using it a drug and alcohol rehabilitation center. Number 19. Britney Spears' Thousand Oaks Mansion in 2015, pop star and global sensation, Britney Spears decided to move to Thousand Oaks to be closer to her now estranged father, Jamie Spears. He had been battling an unknown but serious illness at the time, and Britney decided it was best to move closer to home. So she bought a 7.4 million mansion. Damn, that shit nice. Look at the, like, just over the hill. That's a nice view. That's a really nice view. A dip in her 60 million net worth. Situated in the exclusive White Stallion Estates, this sprawling 8,456 square foot residence sits on 21 acres of picturesque landscape. 21 acres, you can do what you want. Damn. 
providing both grandeur and seclusion. Constructed with an Italian villa aesthetic, the mansion features five bedrooms and seven and a half bathrooms, showcasing opulent design elements such as high ceilings, marble floors, and ornate detailing throughout. The grand entryway leads into a vast living area adorned with large windows, which offer breathtaking views of the surrounding mountains and valleys. The gourmet kitchen is equipped with top-of-the-line appliances, custom cabinetry, and a spacious island, perfect for entertaining. The master suite includes a luxurious bathroom with a soaking tub, dual vanities, and a walk-in closet. However, the home was quickly I like that little entrance right there. We they got the, like the stones, but the grass going in between it. I really like that. Quickly abandoned when Spears decided to relocate back to Los Angeles. The waterworks might have been turned off, but it seems like much of the rest of the house has been left untouched since Spears moved away. Aerial footage even showed toys scattered in the pool from when the pop star's children played in it several years ago. The luscious green lawns have turned brown and unkempt after years and years of neglect. Eventually, Brittany listed the home for sale in 2022 for $7.9 million. Because of the disarray, buyers refused to pay an inflated price for the mansion, and the pop star had to settle with the best offer she could get. However, in 2023, the pop star announced she was thinking of moving back to Thousand Oaks after her divorce from Sam Asghari. By the way, she'd bought another multi-million home in Calabasas with Sam, which, in 2023, they had to sell as part of their divorce proceedings. It is unclear if Brittany did move back in and fix things or not. Number 18. Birdman's Louisiana Mansion In 2005, Birdman was one of several homeowners who had to abandon their homes in wake of Hurricane Katrina. Pat Swelling had owned the home up until 2004, when Birdman offered to take it out of his hands. Now, the rapper wishes someone would do the same for him. Birdman has not been back in his Louisiana home since Hurricane Katrina struck the state. The house was destroyed in several ways, nothing that could not be repaired eventually, but Birdman decided it wasn't worth the trouble. Today, the nearly 11,000 square foot home stays vacant and is valued at $650,000. I mean, that ain't bad, but you'd have to do a lot of work. Devaluation from the millions Birdman spent on it, but worth some money at least. The vintage style home was constructed in 1990, comprises five bedrooms and five bathrooms. It also features two hot tubs, a sauna, and a swimming pool. Today, it has been about 15 years since the house has been abandoned. Why are there no takers for this otherwise luxurious fixer? Probably don't want another hurricane to knock it out again. That's probably why. Upper. You might remember that Hurricane Katrina shook the lives of whole communities, many of which surrounded Birdman's now vacant mansion. The area, as it turns out, is highly susceptible to hurricanes and flooding. Yeah, that's why. Even if someone bought the mansion, they would have to renovate it from scratch every few years. Not really worth the trouble. Yeah. You'd be surprised to know that this is not the only mansion that Birdman suffered a loss with. His Miami mansion, the one he bought for 14.5 million, was sold for a little over 10 million. Birdman should probably come to terms with the fact that a career in real estate just is not for him. Number 17. Tommy Lee's Calabasas Mansion. Bought in 2007 for $5.75 million, television and reality star, Tommy Lee has been desperately trying to sell his Calabasas mansion for almost 10 years now. Six bedrooms, eight bathrooms, and an atrium with an indoor waterfall. You'd think that buyers would jump at the opportunity That's pretty nice. That's a nice backyard, though. Nice pool. ...to buy Tommy's luxurious mansion. However, Despite listing it for sale several times, taking it off the market, and readjusting the price, there have been no takers just yet. The celebrity's mansion reflected all things luxurious and grand. With an indoor koi pond, a retractable glass ceiling, stone spas, and a pool in the shape of a grand piano. That's 
The home also has an indoor theater room. And got the red seats. Man, what? Ain't nobody want this. A wine room, a gym, and every other luxury imaginable for 10,000 square feet of land. All of its lavish features would make you think that buyers are missing out on an architectural marvel. While there have been other mansions on this list, Tommy's Calabasas home stands out as definitely the most unique. However, one of the biggest reasons why buyers have been apprehensive of taking it off Tommy's hands is the fact that his wife, Brittany Furlan, believes the house is haunted, right? Brittany posted on her TikTok warning potential buyers that they would get more than they paid for with the couple's Calabasas home. She claimed that the previous owners knew that the house had demonic spirits living in it too and claimed to have seen a shadowy figure one night. Tommy prepared to sell the home once in 2016 for six million, a meager profit, then took it off the market and reposted his listing for 4.59 million. Eventually, the house was sold for an even bigger loss at 3.6 million. At least Brittany is free from the evil spirits that lived with her at Calabasas. Number 16, Anwar Hadid's Bel Air Mansion. Would that stop y'all from getting a nice mansion or a nice house? Knowing that there is some like demons or something like that, you know what I'm saying in there? I don't know, I'm just thinking that is a little bit different though. I don't know. I don't know. Did you know that supermodel sisters Gigi and Bella Hadid come from real estate royalty? Their father, Anwar Hadid, has owned and sold properties all over the United States and has several successful businesses to his name, too. The millionaire took on another project in 2011 when he bought a hillside 1.2 like a university or a JC or something like that. All them trees and windows. Acre lot in Los Angeles's Bel Air district and began constructing his dream home. Anwar projected a $50 million mega mansion, which he intended to sell later for a full profit, hoping to make a hundred million from it. However, he had to settle with a lot less and sold the property along with the half-built mansion for 8.5 million. The Bel Air home was supposed to be 33,000 square feet, but Anwar had told authorities that he would be building a 14,000 square foot home on the lot. Reportedly, Anwar began expanding the project without telling the authorities and getting the proper permits. Even his architect warned him that he was building a home too big for the acres it was one, fearing it would collapse down on the other residents of Bel Air. When the neighbors caught wind of the project and that Anwar had continued building the mansion, despite being warned by the authorities, they decided to take legal action. He said, I'm going to build it anyway. Later. Okay, I like his attitude, though. Action. The home was eventually bought by Sahara Construction, and they agreed to pay the $5 million it would take just to demolish Anwar's half-built dream home. Dang. Number 15, the Shares Malibu Mansion. The global superstar bought her Malibu mansion in 1989 for three million dollars, but when she listed it for sale several decades later, she wanted 85 million for it. This is not to suggest that the home is not worth the huge price tag, but that it has been hard for Cher to find someone who would be willing to put down that money for a home she is quite visibly upselling. In the singer's Fence, she did renovate the Tuscan style home quite a lot. Besides adding an infinity pool, Cher expanded the property to include an indoor and outdoor gym. The house features five bedrooms and seven bathrooms, built on 1.7 acres of land, coming up to 14,000 square feet overall. There's a guest house, just as lavish, at the side of the mansion. However, the most notable and otherwise share-like feature of this home is the climate-controlled wig room, which houses 100 of the singer's iconic headpieces and wigs from her decades-long career. Cher did take a price cut after realizing the house was not selling and agreed to sell her Malibu mansion for 10 million less than her initial asking price. The listing is still up if you can afford a few million to live life in luxury like Cher. Number 14. 
Wayne Manor. At the height of his fame, in 2011, Lil Wayne decided to splurge and bought an 11.6 million home in Miami, which he called Wayne Manor. The house reflected everything he wanted. It featured a rooftop skating rink, a shark pond. He really do got a <laughs> half pipe up on there. That's lit. And a two-story master suite, which was only accessible via glass elevator. The home was a reflection of the fast-paced and lavish life that the rapper had gotten used to. It featured seven bedrooms and nine bathrooms, equipped with a pool, a home theater, and a recording studio. Just four years later, though, Lil Wayne realized the house's upkeep and property taxes were not worth the splurge. He listed the home for sale and was asking for $15 million. Because of its prime location, you would think that buyers were lining up at the open house. You would be wrong. It took a while for the home to sell, and the rapper eventually had to settle for lower than his asking price. The Miami mansion was bought sometime in 2017 for $10.5 million. Number 13. Courtney Loves Olympia, Washington Retreat. What was interesting about Courtney Loves Olympia Retreat's listing was the fact that the seller did not mince their words. The listing candidly calls the home a fixer-upper and warns buyers that the home would require a significant renovation. A complete overhaul would have been a better very significant. Damn, another, man, it's been burned down, built up and burnt down again. I don't, mm, dang. Way to describe the home that once belonged to the television and reality star. Courtney had bought the home, three bedrooms and two bathrooms, in 1995, a year after her husband, Kurt Cobain, passed away. She bought the home for 447000 but never really lived there. The house was reclaimed by nature with acres and acres of grass engulfing the home by the time it was listed for sale in 2011. It took until 2018 for the home to eventually sell, especially since the stables and interior of the home were now covered in graffiti and people had started coming to the property to hide away. Desperate for a sale, Courtney listed the home for a significant price drop asking for only $320,000 for the Olympia retreat. The house was renovated fully and has now been restored. Olympia retreat, Olympia retreat program over there. That's crazy. Stored to its former glory. Number 12, Elon Musk's multi-million mansion. In 2017, the founder of Tesla and SpaceX bought a stunning $23 million home from the Deguin family. The home, featuring seven bedrooms, nine and a half baths, stunning leather encased bookshelves, home theaters, Tuscan style kitchens, and several amenities was built in 1912 by French businessman Count Christian de Guigne. Musk bought the home from his family, specifically Count Christian IV in 2017. While the home was everything the billionaire wanted, he soon realized that it was just too big for him. Musk put the property up for sale just three years later in 2020 and told buyers that there was virtually nothing wrong with the estate. He just wanted it to go to someone with a bigger family. While his heart was probably in the right place, Musk failed to take into account the fact that there were only a handful of people on earth who could afford a grand home with a hefty price tag besides yeah, like, dang. Why does everything look weird in this picture? Tim. The Grand Mansion I think that's the real one right there. Dang. That's a nice little home. Though. was not the only thing that Musk listed for sale. In fact, in 2020, Musk announced that he would be selling most of what he owned, including his entire real estate portfolio, because he wanted to direct all his funds toward his space exploration mission, SpaceX. This included selling three adjacent mansions in Bel Air one of which once belonged to actor Gene Wilder. Altogether, Musk's real estate portfolio was valued at a little over $100 million. Guinea Court, however, came with the heftiest price tag and was listed for over $37 million. When no one stepped forward to claim the home, he shaved off $5 million and managed to sell the home for $32 million. 
Musk is probably planning on buying his next mansion on Mars. Yeah, probably. Number 11. Steve Jobs' Jackling House. Built in 1925 for copper magnate Daniel Jackling, the Jackling House is the perfect example of luxury. The house was built as a Spanish revival estate by the legendary architect George Washington Smith. It features altogether 30 rooms, including 14 bedrooms. The home sprawls across 17,250 square feet. This is actually nice. You got like all that land right there. I mean, your lawn day is going to be a, one hell of a day. But I mean, I can see you like, you know what I'm saying? If you fixed it up a little bit, it would be a nice home right there. Include stucco walls, red tiled roofs, and a grand courtyard reminiscent of California estate in the 20th century. Enter the founder of Apple who purchased the home in 1984 for 3.5 million, a steal all things considered. But the house was not something that really appealed to Jobs. In fact, he later admitted that he had wanted to buy the ideal property just for its location and had planned on demolishing the actual home that stood on it. Jobs printed out maps that would transform the architectural marvel into a more modern home, something that preservationists would not let happen. They rallied against the founder of Apple and demanded that he let the home stand as a piece of architectural history. Wow, that's kind of messed up. He's like, I bought it, I want it, dang. Yeah, I'd be kind of pissed. Pointing out that he could very easily buy another estate in the area. Demolishing the Jackling House was unnecessary. Despite all the backlash, Jobs wanted to go through with the overhaul project. This had him slapped with several lawsuits by the preservationists who believed the money could be spent on a renovation project, not a demolition one. Jobs countered that the house was beyond repair and not suited to his family's needs. The legal tussle attracted considerable attention and became a significant hassle for Jobs. Ultimately, after a protracted legal struggle, Jobs won the right to demolish the mansion in 2011, shortly before his death. The demolition of the Jackling House and the notoriety surrounding the legal battles diminished the estate's appeal to potential buyers. These factors combined made it difficult to attract offers that matched the property's high valuation, causing it to linger on the market for an extended time. Number 10, Jason Derulo's Coconut Cream Mansion. The pop star's mansion in Coconut Creek, Florida reflected his lavish lifestyle. Jason named the home Coconut Cream Manion, renovated one of the suites into a mirrored dance studio, and transformed the guest house into a recording studio. Jason bought the luxurious estate in 2012 for $1.75 million as it stood on close to 12,000 square feet of land. The property hosts seven bedrooms, nine bathrooms, That's a nice view right there. along with several renovation projects Jason took on to have his home match his lifestyle. However, Jason soon grew tired of living in Coconut Creek and wanted to move to a beachier location. He bought a castle-like mansion in Tarzana and listed coconut cream for sale. Initially, Jason wanted a little under $3 million. This reflected the added features since he'd bought the home in 2009. By the time he was selling it in 2015, however, the mansion's features included a state-of-the-art recording studio, a gourmet kitchen, a spacious home theater, and a gym. I mean, that's about worth three million right there being, you know, being real, I would think. Outside, the property is equally impressive with a resort-style pool, a hot tub, and a basketball court. The expansive grounds are beautifully landscaped, providing a private oasis perfect for both relaxation and entertainment. Despite its many attractions, selling the Coconut Cream Mansion proved to be a challenging endeavor for Derulo. The primary difficulty stemmed from the unique and highly personalized nature of the property. The mansion was tailored specifically to Derulo's tastes and lifestyle, which did not necessarily align with the preferences of potential buyers. Ultimately, he sold the home in 2016 for just under $2 million after he found some wiggle room. Number 9. The Controversial Minnelli Mansion 
In the middle of Beverly Hills, California, is a mansion that was once owned by famed Hollywood actress Liza Minnelli. However, today, the mansion is home to squatters and drug addicts. And Dang. <laughs> squatters and drug addicts. It seems like Minnelli's lost all hope of reclaiming the property. The property was originally built by legendary architect Jack Wolf for famed Hollywood producer Vincente Minnelli, Liza's father, after his split from Liza's mother, the legendary Judy Garland. Liza spent most of her childhood and teenage years at the mansion and inherited it from her father after his death in 1986. The home, had she sold it back then, would have been sold for no less than $4 million. Minnelli had always planned on selling the estate, but there was a problem. Vincente's fourth wife, Lee Anderson, whom he'd married just six years before his death, had been promised permanent residence in the estate until her death. Wow. Initially, Liza agreed to let Lee live in the mansion, provided she kept up with the upkeep of the house. Things seemed to have been going well for some time, up until the year 2000, when Liza declared she had found a buyer for the house. This started a lengthy legal battle with Lee, who refused to move into an apartment Liza had offered. The home could not legally be handed over to anyone else as long as Lee lived there. In the end, Liza and Lee compromised again, and she continued to live there until her death in 2009. Still, Liza could not find a buyer for the house. The house had been in a state of disarray, and it seemed like Liza had all but given up on it. The furniture was torn up and most of it stolen, and the walls had graffiti on them. Liza let the home stay vacant, even as it stands today. Now, it is taken over by squatters and scoundrels who refuse to move and let the home be demolished. The mansion was a symbol of Hollywood glamour, nestled in one of the most prestigious neighborhoods and spanning a generous 5,800 square feet. It featured five bedrooms, a lavish swimming pool, and a lush garden that provided a serene retreat from the bustling city life. Today, it's in ruins. Number 8. Alicia Keys' New Jersey Mansion Alicia Keys and Swizz Beats' New Jersey Mansion, located in Englewood, exudes luxury and sophistication. The mansion, known as the Bubble Hill Estate, was previously owned by actor and comedian Eddie Murphy. Built in 1989, the estate sits on five acres of beautiful that view's nice, though. That's pretty nice, I can't lie. Beautifully landscaped. Look at that, you get to see the beach and everything. There's nobody really next to you or anything. That's nice. Grounds, just a short distance from New York City. The couple purchased the mansion in 2013 for 12.1 million. The sprawling 25,000 square foot property includes eight bedrooms, 14 bathrooms, an indoor pool, and a professional recording studio. The estate also features luxurious amenities, such as a movie theater, a bowling alley, and a tennis court. Eventually, the couple decided to sell the home, but that became a challenge. The primary issue was its high price tag. Also, the mansion's size and specialized amenities did not appeal to every buyer further narrowing the field. The couple listed the house for sale twice, once for 10 million and then again for 6 million. It is interesting to think that someone bought the mega mansion for such a steal. Number seven, Boris Becker's Mallorca mansion. Built in the 1990s, Sun Call was German tennis player. Boris Becker's home away from home. The luxurious mansion was located in Mallorca, Spain, a beautiful, picturesque location. The sprawling estate was valued at around 9 million and featured a main house of approximately 30,000 square feet, complete with a tennis court, two guest houses, a swimming pool, and stunning Mediterranean views. However, Becker faced significant controversies surrounding the property. He reportedly neglected to maintain it properly leading to legal disputes with local authorities over unpaid construction bills and taxes. Additionally, the mansion became a symbol of Becker's financial troubles as he declared bankruptcy in 2017. Number 6. Tom Cruise's Telluride Mansion 
Nestled in the scenic mountains of Colorado, Tom. Hey, that's kind of nice. Yeah, the snow. Yeah, you know, nobody really around. Tom Cruise's Telluride Mansion is a stunning property that reflects both luxury and seclusion. Yeah. Cruise purchased the expansive estate in the early 1990s for an undisclosed sum, but it is estimated to have been in the multi-million dollar range. Spanning 320 acres, the property features a 10,000 square foot main house and a 1,600 square foot guest house. The main house features seven bedrooms, nine bathrooms, a spacious living room with a stone fireplace, a dining room, and a gourmet kitchen. Nice. The mansion also includes a private trail system, a sports court, and a private helipad, catering to Cruz's adventurous lifestyle. Despite its many features, selling the Telluride mansion proved to be a challenge large cab and all that wood and everything. challenge for the actor initially listed in 2014 for 59 million Jay, the high pr 59 million, price tag it. failed to attract any buyers yeah. the remote location also made it less appealing the selling lingered on the market for several years price adjustments were made but finding the right buyer took time ultimately Cruz sold the mansion in 2021 for 39.5 million. Number five, Keith Richard and Patty Hansen's apartment. The couple purchased the apartment in 2014 for 10.5 million. This historic build. An apartment for 10 million. Let me see what was popping with this. An apartment for 10 million. Hey, building built 1927 is renowned for its Art Deco design and has been a sought-after address for many celebs. The apartment is a luxurious duplex, approximately 2,700 square feet. It features three bedrooms, four bathrooms, and an array of high-end finishes. High three bedrooms for 10 million. Ceilings, a wood-burning fireplace, and custom millwork add to the apartment's charm. The gourmet kitchen, equipped with top-of-the-line appliances, and the master suite, featuring a spa-like bathroom and a walk-in closet. Initially listed in 2016 for 12.23 million, the apartment failed to attract buyers. Despite the apartment's prime location and celebrity allure, these factors made it challenging to attract the right buyer. Ultimately, the property sold in 2021 for an undisclosed amount. Number 4. Robin Williams Villa Ceriso. The later Hollywood legend purchased the estate in 2008 for an estimated 4.5 million and named it Villa Ceriso. The estate spanned over 6,000 square feet, situated on a 20-acre lot, featuring five bedrooms and six full bathrooms. The home also included a state-of-the-art home theater. That view is dope. You, looks like you got the mountains, some hills, a little bit of green to look at and everything. Theater, a wine cellar, and multiple living. Outside, there was a swimming pool and a tennis court. Nice. Following William's tragic death in 2014, the mansion was listed for sale in 2016 at 7.25 million. This was after the actor's late wife demanded that she be paid more money from Williams's trust to manage the upkeep of the mansion, something the actor's children denied, calling their stepmother greedy for violating the terms of the trust. Yeah. Villa Ceriso was eventually sold in 2020 after And secluded area and everything. Several controversies in the Williams household for five million, a huge drop from initial asking, and a steal considering the location and its history. Number three, Mike Tyson and then 50 Cent's mansion. 50 Cent. <laughs> the rapper's mansion in Farmington, Connecticut, originally built for Mike Tyson, spanned over 50,000 square feet Dang. and featured 21 bedrooms, 25 bathrooms, a nightclub, gym, indoor pool, home theater, and a recording studio. Purchased for 4.1 million in 2003, the mansion was initially listed for 18.5 million in 2007, but struggled to sell due to its extravagant size, high maintenance costs, and a downturn in the luxury real estate market. After more than a decade on the market and several price reductions, 50 Cent sold the property in 2019 for less than 3 million, an 84% loss. Number 2. Nicholas Cage's Garden District Home. 
Situated in Los Angeles's Garden District, it is hard to imagine why the actor's magnificent home failed to attract any buyers for so long. However, a look into its history might provide some clues. The house once belonged to the LaLaurie family. The name Dalphine LaLaurie might ring a bell. The heiress went down in history as a notorious figure, who was believed to have tortured and killed slaves in the 13,000-square-foot mansion's attic. Cage, however, was not off-put by the house's history and bought the property in 2006 for almost $3 million. He then funneled another few million to renovate the home and bring it up to modern standards. That being said, Cage bought the mansion at a time when he really should not have had, and most definitely should not have had spent all that money on renovations. Money which he didn't have. After renovating the home with an Olympic-sized pool and imported staircases, the actor was forced to sell it to settle his financial debts. The home was listed for just under eight million and despite its grandeur, failed to attract buyers. Yeah. For one, the house's eerie history made it less desirable for buyers, I and bet. then there was the hefty price tag. Number one, Whitney Houston's Mendham Mansion. Whitney Houston paid just over 500,000 for her Mendham. Jeez, that's nice. That's Mendham, nice. New Jersey home in the 90s. This was when she was at the height of her career, and buying real estate to later sell for a profit. Apparently, that was the goal for the Mendham estate as well. The property includes several bedrooms and bathrooms with high-end finishes and spacious living areas. Its well-manicured grounds provide a serene environment, ideal for both relaxation and entertainment. The home was listed for sale several years after her passing. Initially listed in the mid-2010s, with an asking price of around $1 million. However, the sale faced challenges, mostly because of the need for updates and the maintenance required to restore the property to its full potential. The house eventually sold for nearly a little less than asking. But that did not matter, as long as the property was off Houston's family's hands. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. For abandoned mansions and everything like that, leave in the comments below which mansion you liked and which mansion you think you might want to try to put up for or something like that. Let's talk about it. I'll talk to y'all on the next one for sure, for sure. Thanks for joining in.